in terms of that outcome. That is why we thought that uh, we needed to wait for this moment and that uh, we issue this statement. The president of the ANC, Comrade Cyril Matamela Ramaphosa, in his capacity as the president of the country, will be here tonight. As the president of the ANC on Tuesday evening at Lutuli House, we will, uh, he will speak and thank all the people who have voted for the ANC and all our volunteers and everybody who have campaigned in this election. Uh, the Tuesday event is not a celebration because there's nothing to celebrate. Um, in terms of uh, the performance of the ANC, the Tuesday event is to thank our people and uh, through the president and the leader of our party, the leader of the African National Congress, to speak to the people um, about the election results and the outcome. As tonight will not mainly represent the ANC, but will be about South Africa uh, as a country and South Africans who have taken uh, time to cast their vote. We are presenting a statement as a reflection by the ANC uh, in terms of uh, the results uh, thus far. So I wish to make that particular point at the beginning so that uh, we are much clearer about uh, the path we are traversing and that uh, we are following. The African National Congress commends the people of South Africa for once again demonstrating the strength and vibrancy of our democracy. While we still await the formal announcement of uh, results by the IEC, it is clear that the ANC has won most votes and remains the most popular party in South Africa. Six million people from those who voted have voted for the African National Congress. The ANC has also achieved a decisive majority in five provinces. The ANC thanks all those who voted for the organization, who showed confidence in our concerted efforts to get our country back on a path to prosperity for all and for supporting our efforts to rid the ANC of corrupt elements as part of our renewal process. The millions of South Africans who voted for the ANC have seen the effects of the work we have done to end load shedding, to revive our infrastructure program, to provide social protection to the poor and unemployed, to provide work opportunities and work experience to young people, and to hold those responsible for corruption to account. The ANC emerges from this election with a firm mandate to continue this work to rebuild the economy, create jobs, end corruption, tackle the high cost of living, and continue the transformation of the economy and society. While the ANC has won the most votes in this election, the results show a significant decline in the ANC support from previous elections. While there are several factors that have contributed to the decline in support, the results send a clear message to the ANC. We wish to assure the people of South Africa that we have heard them. We have heard their concerns, their frustrations, and their dissatisfaction. Over the last six years, the ANC has been engaged in a process of renewal and revitalization. This process is not yet complete, and the election results show that we need to intensify and accelerate the fundamental renewal of our movement. 
We want to assure the people of South Africa that the ANC will not turn its back on renewal. On this matter, on the renewal and rebuilding of our movement, we will not compromise. The results also show people's concerns about shortcomings in governance and delivery. We enter a new term with both a clear mandate and a firm commitment to improve the maintenance of infrastructure and the provision of services in communities throughout the country. The ANC is committed to the formation of a government that reflects the will of the people, that is stable and that is able to govern effectively. The ANC is committed to pursue a path of fundamental social and economic change for which it has received a firm mandate. Over the next few days, the ANC will be having discussions within the organization and with other parties and stakeholders on how best to establish national and provincial governments that reflect the will of the people and that are able to take the country forward. The voters of South Africa have shown that they expect the leaders of this country to work together in the interest of all. We will continue to act responsibly, progressively, and at all times in the interest of the people of South Africa. We will continue to uphold the rule of law and call on all South Africans to respect the laws, rules and codes that govern the conduct of elections. It is through the consistent application of these rules that over the course of 30 years, our freeness and fairness of our elections have been assured. We call on all South Africans to resist the efforts of those forces who want to weaken our democracy, who want to undermine our electoral processes, and who want to disregard the will of the people. As a nation, we will stand together against those who threaten violence and instability. The people of South Africa, as they have shown in the past, will not tolerate any threats to our democracy. The people of South Africa have made their wishes known in free and fair elections, and we must all respect them. The ANC once again extends its appreciation to all voters, and many of whom waited in queues for several hours, even late into the night. We want to also congratulate political parties who have uh, won the hearts and minds of the electorate, and uh, it is the people's choice that reflects the outcome and the percentages that they have received. The ANC thanks the Independent Electoral Commission, its staff and election workers for their contribution to successful election days. We also thank all party agents, observers from the continent and abroad, police and defense force personnel, and members of the media. As we have done since the formation of our movement, more than 112 years, the African National Congress will put the interests and the well-being of South Africans first. Let's do more together. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Secretary General. On that note, let us do more together. We remain committed to that mantra. I will, at this point in time, open up four questions from you, ladies and gentlemen, members of the media. I am trying to look in my left direction. Um, I just wish you could raise your hands a bit higher, uh, given the lighting in, in the auditorium. I don't see anyone to my left. I will go to my right. <laughs> okay, uh, please just indicate there's a very strong um, light that is cast this side. 
just for my benefit. Introduce yourself, the media house you represent, and proceed. Uh, good morning, Alfa Ramushwana here from High Minister Mr. Mr. Badula, I know you've you know, spoken about Zuma so many times uh, since December 16 when the NK party was announced. But don't you think you sort of underestimated the power the man has, especially in a province like was in Natal? Uh, because honestly, we walked the floor with the ANC. And we have been asking these questions leading up to the elections, and we have been giving us a uh, pretty nonchalant attitude towards the NK party. Don't you think that the, a the ANC is underestimating uh, Azuma and his party in the days of one year today? Thank you. Thank you very much, Eyewitness News. Anybody to my left? Yes, please go ahead. Introducing yourself. Thank you, Abu Mutila from ANCA. Uh, just on uh, Mr. Zuma himself, maybe could you have done things differently in terms of dealing with the emergence of the MK party? Are you still going to go ahead with disciplinary proceedings against Mr. Zuma for actively uh, uh, you know, campaigning against the ANC itself? Have you reflected as leadership in terms of um, the reason you've got such you know, not so great results as a party? And would you be speaking to the NK party in terms of coalition talks, given that they made it clear that they don't want the ANC, well, Ramakosa led ANC? Would that be something you're willing to consider, maybe the removal of President Ramakosa in coalition talks with the NK party? Thank you, ANCA. Do we have anybody else to the left? Right at the back, uh, please introduce yourself. Uh, hi, my name is Jonathan Pali. I'm from Inside Politics. Uh, when you mentioned it, uh, I know it's probably too early to, to tell them at this moment, but when you mentioned you're open to uh, working with other parties, does that include the DA? And how would the ANC facilitate such a coalition? Thank you. Thank you very much from inside. I will take my sister over there from um, Russia TV, if I'm not mistaken. No, it's from the DM. Oh, the DM, okay. Um, so my question is around um, conditions and the non-negotiables um, from the ANC side, and then um, rumors around people within the ANC who assisted the NK party with campaigning, um, quietly so. Um, do you guys know anything about it, and uh, is there a possibility that the ANC will be looking into that? Thank you very much. Um, I will take yourself uh, just behind Quinnin. Um, go ahead, my brother. Thank you so much, Sister Brother, for my own news. Um, uh, as you can just get a firm response um, regarding what the former president said last night. Uh, thank you so much. If you could just reiterate what he did say, because he said a lot of things for the benefit of the SG. Okay, just about the aspect of the perceived threats of violence that came out. Okay. All right, thank you very much. I'll take the last hand and then we'll have another round. Um, right there at the back, please go ahead. Christian Lucy from the back Is she, uh, due to the ANC's performance, will the ANC be looking to uh, remove certain people from power positions in the ANC? And is the, the uh, job of the president of the ANC side at the stage? Thank you. Well, thank you very much. I will now turn to um, Comrade SG for that first round of responses. Tough questions. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you very much. Um, let's start with EWN, uh, Zuma factor. Uh, Zuma was a factor in this election, and the same as the formation of Mkonto with Sizwe, and uh, we knew that. And uh, we did not talk out of turn about Zuma, we were exposing uh, the untruths in the campaign that uh, he was talking about and uh, also defending our own party and our own organization in terms of those untruths. Um, we never underestimated Zuma. Uh, we knew that uh, he will get support in Natal, in Pumalanga and Gaute. And uh, that is why we, we put up a fight uh, in relation to him 
and his party and also mobilizing our people and uh, you all saw us on the ground and you even I did mention the fact that the ANC is spending a lot of time and money uh, in KwaZulu Natal and Khalte because you yourselves you knew that uh, we had been challenged in these two provinces heavily. Also because Khalte we won it uh, but not convincingly even last time we just ended at 50 percent. So and also because these two provinces constituted the biggest populace in relation to the election. And so our challenge was there. And uh, we spend a lot of time and resources uh, in terms of this campaign, working very hard to convince the people. And of course, there were big challenges on the ground. Uh, water crisis in KZN uh, was the biggest, and we entered the election dealing with challenges of load shedding, but Zuma on his own, uh, and because he comes from that province, was affected uh, in terms of the campaign of the ANC. And uh, it is shown uh, in the results. We have lost even some of our strongholds to the MK party uh, in, in KwaZulu Natal. I mean, uh, so it looks like uh, we were marching with Zuma Michina as we were working uh, on the ground. Uh, so it is reflected in the in the result uh, and so on. So going back to the drawing board, this will be analysed carefully by our team led by Nomvula, our DSG, uh, who was heading our election campaign with Mdu as the election head. Uh, so the team and the research team will come to us uh, and so on with all those factors. Um, we had to fight hard in this uh, election, uh, ladies and gentlemen, because even our own research did point to dangers that uh, the ANC will get 43%. But uh, we stretch ourselves uh, in a way that uh, we convince the people to vote for us. All sorts of factors were against us. You yourself as a media, collectively and individually. I saw you in the queues, uh, punching the line, change, change, change. <laughs> and uh, most of you, we can't, uh, we don't control the media. Even after the results, you are using very uh, harsh words. The ANC has been put out and, and all of that. We are not put out, we suffered heavily, uh, but we are not out. We are still a force to be reckoned with. And uh, your polls and everybody else, which we did not argue with, did tell a story that we will be in our 30s and all of that. So we believe in persuading the voters. And we ran a very clean campaign. A clean campaign, we are not dating. Uh, we believed in the power of our message uh, to the people and what we are there to offer. Of course, the sins of incumbency were also eating in our capital, so to say politically, um, in terms of how far we could have gone. You will see in this result that our enemy, which is a low voter turnout, affected us also. Uh, there were glitches there and there, which were fixed to a certain extent uh, by the IEC, uh, but we don't count that as eating in the morale of our electorate. Uh, we accept the results and we congratulate the IEC for all the efforts they've put to run a free and fair elections. ENCA, uh, again, Zuma, uh, ANC does not change things because of the weather. Uh, if you are a member of the ANC, you work by the rules of the party. And uh, those rules means you've got to abide by the discipline of the party. And uh, Mr. Zuma has been suspended by the ANC, and uh, the ANC will follow through all the rules uh, of the party. The party is not decimated. It is led by Ramaphosa and all of us. Yeah, and uh, you don't change the rules because of the outcome of the elections. Otherwise, you will not have a party at all. 
so the rules of the ANC will remain. MK party talks, we're talking to everybody. There's nobody who are not going to talk to. Uh, like I said to you at the beginning, when I was talking to you outside, let me repeat it again. We have been approached by political parties, as it is normal, and the outcome is clear. Nobody has got outright majority. So we'll talk to everybody. We'll talk to everybody. And uh, don't uh, want uh, to distort things. We're talking to the DA, yeah, we are talking to the MK party, we're talking to EFF, we're talking to everybody. Uh, because the election did not give us outright majority. Those who don't want to talk, don't want to talk, we can't force them. We're looking at our scenarios, we're looking at the options uh, before us. We're having a, a National Executive Committee meeting on Tuesday which will report on these talks. Talks about talks. <laughs> Otherwise, there will be no talks if we reach the uh, outright majority. Yeah. I cannot stand here and tell you that I've got a mandate to tell you that we will not talk to everybody. I've got a mandate from the leadership of the ANC as of yesterday that we must engage with political parties who are engaging with us. And political parties have approached us and uh, we will be talking to them. We've got a team led by the Secretary General that will be talking to everybody in the talks about talks. And we'll report about those talks tomorrow to the officials, we'll report to the NWC, we'll report it on Tuesday to the NEC. And the NEC will then take a decision uh, informed by its own uh, analysis that it would have received on these matters, what needs to be done. So that's where we are. Talks about talks are in full swing. We are engaged and uh, we are open to engagement. Up until this far, except like in the last election, Mashaba was walking here like a king. And then he said, uh, I don't know where he is in the scoreboard, but uh, I saw him, he wanted to recount. Elections will humble you, it's like a game of golf. Uh, Mashaba declared, yeah, that he will not want to talk to the NC. You have talked to political parties yourselves, and you have engaged with them, we are here today. None of them have said they don't want to talk to the ANC. None. None of, even ourselves, we are not saying we will not talk to anybody. We've got our own principles that we have long adopted in terms of coalitions. And we said that a coalition is a consequence. When you don't have a, a, a majority, you deal with that. There are many options on the table, including a rerun, including going back to the benches, including working with others those who want to work with you to constitute government. We need stability in this country. And like I said in the statement of the ANC, we will put the interest of the people of South Africa first. The coalitions have not worked for us in this country. It has brought instability and all of that. But it is the will of the people. It is the will of the people and that is what we must accept. Uh, it is not an outcome. We ourselves cannot abandon the ship because we've got six million people who are still standing and believing in the African National Congress. If we had one or two million, it will be political obliteration, decimation. You can mention the names. We are not decimated. We are blown but not out. We're still standing. And uh, we will come back. Now, you don't uh, analyze a match by the results, wonderful results of Orlando Pirates yesterday. Uh, uh, by Orlando Pirates yesterday, which have really, really worked on me positively uh, as a supporter. Uh, so nobody won uh, in this election, only Orlando Pirates uh, won yesterday. 
Um, Ramaphosa is the president of the ANC, and if you come to us with those demands, forget. If you come to us with a demand that Ramaphosa must step down as a president, that is not going to happen. We've got no such mandate. We are not going to engage with political parties on the basis that we don't want to talk to so and so and so. Uh, we're not going to do that. Because we don't run political parties. You ask me about MK party. We've got many reservations about that party, but we will talk to them. If they want to work with us, we will map out how we want to do. But no political party will dictate terms like that to us as the ANC. We will not. Uh, that is a no-go area to everyone. It's a no-go area. It's a no-go area. You come to us with that demand, forget. And I've heard some of you murmuring even in the bathrooms. Ramaphosa, when ANC loses power, is going to resign. Why did he stand as a president? You stand in an organization in bad and good times. These are bad times. When we signed to stand, people have asked us a question, Nongula and others, are you going to step down? When we agreed in Nazareth to the branches of the ANC that we stood, it meant even for occasions like this. And uh, we are leadership. Our leadership is tested. You don't run away. Uh, so, uh, we are are so, we are men and women who have been given a responsibility in our party to lead and will lead our party and will give an account in the general council, will give an account uh, even to the national conference about this moment. And uh, we will equally give answers as a leadership about what went wrong and how do we get out of this quagmire. We knew that we were in trouble. It's not like we didn't know. Uh, we fought very hard. Our structures, the president leading from the front, we throw ourselves into it. We didn't sleep because we knew that we are in danger. But this danger can be corrected, and it will be corrected by the current leadership. Inside politics, working with uh, other parties, it will be informed by negotiations and discussions. It will be informed. We are open as the ANC. Like I told you that there is an option to work with a party, there is options, they are there. Even the last option of working from the benches, it is there. There's an opposition. Uh, the ANC will not weigh up, will engage with each, but informed by the discussions we've got with other parties, because we did not win the majority. And that is a fact. If we want a majority, it will be easy. We will move with speed to constitute governments where we have won and appoint premiers in the next coming week. By Thursday, we'll come back to you and announce our premiers as agreed uh, by the National Executive Committee. Uh, we will be done with that task. We've got to prepare to go to the National Assembly, talk with other parties and all of that. That work has begun as of yesterday. <laughs> As I'm speaking to you now, we're talking to parties. We're engaging with them. The officials met yesterday already. Uh, we will meet tomorrow on Monday, officials and the NWC. On Tuesday, there will be an NEC meeting. And on Tuesday in the evening, we will thank our volunteers and supporters who have supported the ANC in this campaign. And the president of the ANC will speak then. Again, walking on the footsteps of being empowered by the NEC, but equally by this statement we are putting across uh, as an organization. So we are ready to work with everybody, but we've got, pet, we've got, uh, we've got uh, perspective, we've got principles. But you recognize that uh, in these elections, like in a coalition, 
you don't work necessarily on the basis of ideology sometimes you work on the basis of interests and at the same time for the stability of the country uh, and everything else so we, we, we must not be preempted through faceless reports false fake news Mbalula is meeting with Rupert and Oppenheim <laughs> I mean what nonsense is that never met with them and then Oppenheimer is about if Oppenheimer loved the ANC he would have given us money gave it to Rise and Zanzi and I don't see them here I mean uh, <laughs> Rise and Zanzi so he gave the money there the ANC fought for itself none of these people you are mentioning today have given us money or shown support to us my preoccupation and our preoccupation has been to interpret the results and at the same time to make a reflection and my job uh, as a secretary general working with the collective and the officials was exactly to do that so i can't spend time here at the election operation center nomvula was here Gwede Mankaje is your friend, is always here. Uh, and all of them, they've been taking interviews. Mdunduli has been here. My job with others has been to sit, think. It, 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 the job is too much. It's too much. I mean, uh, to meet with provinces, prepare provinces to elect premier candidates. We must interview those people. There must be meetings. The organization must operate. So where will I get time? And then at the same time, we must talk to other political parties. Yes, we talk to parties. We engage. And uh, that's it. And parties approach us and we engage with them. And uh, uh, that is what uh, we're going to do. Rumors and people, it's not going to help the ANC. Mm. Rumors, even myself, my sister, I've heard about them. It's not going to help our organization to start pointing, uh, finger pointing, that in case at end were betrayed by one of our own. Uh, if if we, t we sensed that, that they are, we knew in case at end, particularly that um, Zuma has got a strong touch. Uh, if there are people who aided him, we will unmask that. But we equally know why MK Party was formed. And uh, we know that, so I, I wish to pause there. Uh, and uh, don't ask me again about it. I'll talk one day. Uh, <laughs> not, uh, not, not now. So uh, Not now. Uh, I world news threats of violence. Our statement is very clear. We condemn any threat of violence. Uh, if people have got concerns, they must raise them with the IEC through the procedures of dispute. We are not saying people must not dispute. They must raise their issues. But going to violence and mud our country and our democratic processes into violence is not going to help. There are, there are many things that sitting here I'm not happy about. <coughs> Uh, that happened on the election day but if you ran elections you have been in the game those things do happen you can complain you need to check if you complain is there any material effect on the results nothing can complain for a vd somewhere that uh, things did not go well if i dispute that and it is addressed we are happy with that so uh, uh, we commend the iec for a job well done, we will be at dinner tonight uh, of the IEC at 7 o'clock. Uh, removing people, will we be removing people? Uh, we don't remove anyone. I've explained that particular point. The task of the leadership is to deal with uh, almost sinking a ship uh, the results have, have shown us uh, that uh, if we don't strengthen the renewal and many other things we needed to do as a party, 
uh, we will be gone. So it's no longer a pipe dream, the issue that the ANC can be cut below 50%, it has happened in our lifetime. So we need to correct ourselves, the path we have started, the things we have been warned about by society, by the elders, and everyone else. And uh, I forgot to thank our alliance partners, uh, COSATU, Communist Party, and, and SAMCO, and the broader mass democratic movement, SASCO, COSAS, uh, the Women's League and the Youth League for their contribution in this campaign. It was tough, uh, but they did come to the party. So we ran a very smart campaign, even if I have to say it myself. Uh, we did the things that campaigners do uh, to woo the votes. We strengthened our voter contact like nobody's business. Uh, the leadership leading from the front, we ran a very short campaign three months and uh, we thought that would have made an impact we would have been heard the people did hear only six million turned out to agree uh, with us so we're not going to remove anyone uh, anyone who wants to do that including the ANC their procedures to do so uh, I've seen other people we will never allow uh, looking at ourselves. That's normally what happens. You leave the elections, the concerns of the people, the immediate task the party is focused on is leadership. Who becomes the next leader? That thing is not going to give ANC any better result. You spend the next five years fighting for a single leader in the organization. Our job is to start doing things right, as we have done, in preparation for the next election, and not rock up in the doorstep of the people on the election day. Uh, elections are not won like that. So we must continue with the good work that we're doing and uh, getting in touch with the people, and that is what is important uh, for us uh, going forward. Thank you very much. Thank you, SG. May I now turn to the right? I have two hands on the front table. Um, there's the, that spotlight, so I'm going to ask that uh, we continue with the practice of introducing ourselves. Thank you, Mine is about the Northern Cape. Without creating your own diagnosis and analysis of what happened there, could you please just explain, did you anticipate what happened in the Northern Cape and do you regret not, uh, not directing more resources to the campaign there? Well, that a shock to you. And also, during the campaign, the ANC has downplayed what the polls are saying. Going forward, are you going to change how you approach the polls? And also, please just comment on how then, if at all, thank you. Thank you, Sam Tanda. Uh, the, my sister next to you, please proceed. Thank you. Eric Bates here from the show Car Blanche. Uh, SG, just to go back to your talks about talks, uh, to use your own words, you said that you have your principles that you've long adopted when forming coalitions and that ideology is not necessarily a deal breaker. But how important is constitutionality and even institutions of a constitutional democracy such as the IEC when you look to your discussions with potential coalition partners? Here I'm thinking about former ANC leader, now MP leader, Jacob Zuma's remarks yesterday um, threatening, in fact, the IEC and its work which you've actually praised today. So how important is the constitution and its values when you look at potential partners? And then, in terms of your discussions on the coalition, which really is the nub now, who is going to leave this country when most voters have shown their displeasure with the ANC? People in the EFA, for example, or NK, are seen as people who left the ANC because of displeasure with the party. So they've gone, 
but potential talks with them as partners now may be dividing your very party with them. How are you managing that push-pull, specifically with the EFF and MK, but with other coalition potentials as you work towards the meeting of Tuesday? Thank you. Thank you very much, Charlotte. I'm trying to turn to other hands. At the, uh, okay, I will start with Mrs. Junior, um, and then I will then go to, to the back. Let me start with the front table. Okay, thank you so much, Martini. Uh, Junior Kuman from Newsroom Africa. Uh, as you, you speak about the top officials having met yesterday, has it, has it dawned on the top officials um, the gravity of what just happened? Uh, being at the helm of uh, one's glorious movement and you are at the helm of basically the party losing support. Has it dawned on the top leadership? I guess that's the question. Uh, the second question, you, you, you seem to be pointing fingers at uh, a lot of people, including the media, when it comes to the ANC losing electoral support. Uh, but is it not also the ANC's own arrogance? When it comes to um, the list that you put forward, the individuals that were implicated in the State Capture Commission is still being there. They, those same individuals, some of them making it to the top seven leadership as well. Isn't that the arrogance that has turned the people against you? And will there be any changes to those lists of the ANC now that you are going to go into a coalition uh, with other opposition parties? Thank you. Thank you very much. Newsroom. I now turn to the second um, table, the second row. Uh, I'll start with you over there um, in, in the yellow top, sister, and then I'll follow with SABC. Um, Faith Daniels from ENCA. Um, Mr. Moruna, you said that your issues have not worked for you since but it's the will of the people, and then you say that the ANC will give the voters what they want. But um, if we just take who is going to the National Assembly, for example, the will of the people have uh, been very varied. So um, you spoke about the ANC talking to a variety of parties, but can you, narrow, uh, can you narrow that down in terms of who you are absolutely speaking to, in terms of working together at this point? And is there, in terms of the slew of parties that uh, in front of you, is, are there parties that you absolutely at this point are not regarding? Or are you really just entertaining everybody? Thank you. Thank you very much, SABC. Uh, Something like from the SABC. My question is very to the SG of the AIDS education. I'll start with you, Mr. Maduna. One, your loss in Guadalupe Natal. What is your diagnosis telling you? Did your structures actively participate and campaign for the LK party using your own machinery and resources? Were you betrayed by your own leaders in the political executive committee, in the other seats of the entire 11 regions of Brazil and Natal? Secondly, why did you not disband that particular province? When your NWC visit last year figured all of these problems, why did you not dis disband them? Why did you not act then, looking at the catastrophic loss that you suffer today? Third, who is negotiating with Tony Leon of the Democratic Alliance on these particular coalitions that you have? To Nongula Mbonyani, your own members and leaders have said, if you go into a coalition with the Democratic Alliance, it will lead to the second most catastrophic ideological split in the ANC since the PDC. Where do you go? Do you go left? Do you go right? Or do you remain a broad church as you are? Thank you. Thank you very much, Samkelu. I now turn to the other row. Um, somebody that is wearing a green jacket. Please go ahead. Thank you so much. We can my question is to the SG. The SG is saying that the position of the president is non negotiable. There is a talk with the EFF, there is a talking that saying for them to be in coalition, they will prefer the position of the Minister of Finance. Well, the PA is saying it will appreciate the woman this. Are they willing to compromise in this position? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I, I'm done with that row. I'm moving to the next. 
No, that's an afterthought. Uh, so let me start with people that uh, whose hands were raised very early. Um, to you, my brother, please go ahead. Norman Masuwili from City Press. Um, the first question uh, uh, to the SG is that some political parties have already made it clear um, that uh, going into negotiations they will have um, some non-negotiable principles. Does the AEC have those uh, principles, uh, considering or bearing in mind that you have a document that you formulated uh, that you, you, you was tabled uh, at the NEC last year and approved by or adopted by the, 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 the NEC? Um, and what would be those uh, principles that you say these are non negotiables as we enter negotiations? Um, maybe as a clarification, uh, how many political parties are you talking to or have approached you so far? Because you are saying tomorrow you will be, uh, there will be a feedback, uh, there will be a meeting, and then when you meet the NWC, the top structure, and then Tuesday, it means you started moving uh, um, as early as yesterday. Um, how many parties uh, are you talking to um, currently? Maybe the last question that I have is uh, with regard to uh, the former leaders. Uh, we know that some have always been like the former president, Chabo Beke, who um, in the past has already spoken out of, uh, about the former president, Jacob Zuma, and all those things. Uh, in one of the talks, I think if you have my memory says you well, it was during the funeral of uh, Omar DSG, where he said the ANC, uh, well, the ANC structures was full of characters in the weak uh, 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 membership in terms of quality. How well, or oh, how much involved are you going to uh, use the, the, the former leaders seeing that they came out during the elections uh, in the election campaign. How are you going to use them now going forward? Okay, I think, I think the mic wanted you to finish. Uh, thank you, Norman. Um, may I proceed to uh, the next uh, media can house. Can you answer? Oh, do you want to answer yeah. first? Uh, there's quite a number. Okay, so we'll have a third round for a change. Um, there was a question directed to the DSG. May I invite the DSG to react, and then the SG will take the rest of the questions that have been posed to you. DSG. Um, the, the issue about where to move from here, we, we will engage everybody who seeks to contribute towards the stability of our country, the respect uh, for the constitution, and most importantly, the tolerance of diversity of uh, the South African nation. Um, that is what we would, uh, we, we would actually consider. Any other thing that is uh, political about leadership, every organization has got its own internal processes and therefore the determination by others as to who must constitute uh, the team of the African National Congress going into, into the National Assembly as well as uh, in the provinces and in, in, in government, uh, two processes of the NC must be given a, a space, um, including the issues about the lists and stuff. There may be other people that are in other parties' lists that we may also not be comfortable with. And I think it is too early for us to then conclude as to exactly how we respond on the issues. We still maintain that our manifesto was sound and that it is that basis that we must use to continue doing the work that uh, we, we started with the campaign, and it must be an organizational program. The, the last issue I want to comment on, Comrade Matlengi, with your permission, just to remind everybody that we had 27 million registered voters, 16 million voted, 
Then she got six of the 16 million. In 2021, the local government elections, only five million voters voted for the NC. Post that, we now are in 2024, we have 16 million of the 27 casting their votes. Remember, there's been an increase on the registered voters. But in totality, the IEC said it's 16 million and the NC got six, it, which is a growth from the last local government elections. But some amongst you had also said, were those elections, national elections, the NC would have lost. So the renewal is on course. And I do believe that, as the SGS said, we need to be given an opportunity to deal with these matters. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, uh, DSG. First, I want to explain that uh, we're going to have a National Executive Committee meeting to finalize the issues about talks about talks and government. The ANC is going to have a National Executive Committee where we're going to go to conduct a deep analysis about the outcome of the election. Our statement that we have read guide us in relation to the outcome and what we seek to do. The outcome is directing us towards uh, shared power with others. And that's what we are processing right now. So as to what happened to Northern Cape um, and all of that, uh, it will be a consequence of this deep analysis we would have conducted about what happened there um, in, the, in the Northern Cape. We have seen the emergence of Patriotic Alliance and that we're running short of one percentage to govern the Northern Cape outright and so on. So we, we, we're going to make an analysis about what happened there. Uh, our comrades in Northern Cape did well, and they worked very hard. You will know that in the Northern Cape is not the first time we are going this direction. In the past, we were here, a uh, small population and all of that, uh, uh, which we have had challenges uh, at some point that brought us below 50%. Uh, so we, we need to make sense of what happened there and we'll be happy to share with you our own perspective. I hear you say in News 24 that uh, we downplayed the polls. I don't know how and where. I speak on behalf of the National Executive Committee and the spokesperson. None of the people we deployed have ever undermined. Here is our position. Look at the scoreboard it will determine whether the polls were wrong or right. And some of the polls, quite clearly, they were right, uh, but we fought very hard to get out of that position. We said we don't respond to polls, uh, because some of them are ideologically defined, in a sense that uh, they are leading a charge on behalf of others. And that's what, that's what we have said. We don't discuss polls. And uh, to an extent that some of them were right, we see it now on the, on the board, that they were indeed correct, that uh, we will drop below 50%. But uh, we work very hard to get ourselves out of that situation. And uh, we, we, we have never downplayed uh, the polls. If we downplayed the polls, we ourselves would have not conducted our own research. We did conduct the research and it, tell, it told us that uh, we will be at 43%. That is what our research told us. So uh, you don't go to battle and confirm your situation, uh, even to your opponents. You fight to get out of that situation. And that's what uh, we dealt with. And that research did give us pointers, among others, why the mood was at that point. 
Load shedding was big on the agenda. Water was big on the agenda and all of that. South Africans continue to give us 10 out of 10 when it comes to social protection and looking after their interests. And uh, they support. And then uh, we knew that a low voter turnout will not be in our favor, uh, especially in our base areas. And uh, it is quite clear in this election, as much as we won other provinces, but low voter turnout counted uh, against us. We knew that Zuma is a factor in KZN, and uh, that is what our poll, also our old polling, had actually told us if he split in the way that he does and work against the ANC. All odds will be against us. How day you're dealing with, uh, again, it goes back to that deep analysis uh, in terms of how day. It's an urban area and then uh, interest vary from one community to the other. Um, uh, so you, you will have to conduct a deep analysis about what actually happened. Did the middle class walk away from us in Gauteng? What happened? But in Gauteng, what we can say just at the face value at the present moment is that voter turnout in our base areas worked against us. Uh, so where to and all the other areas? Our people did not come out in numbers and vote. And uh, you can't then say even the black middle straighter have not voted for us. It looks like we shared. Those who came out to vote, they voted for us. Because uh, if it entirely worked against us, it means the rise in Zanzi will be the biggest party uh, in South Africa today, if the results were to tell us something. Because that is the party that attracted, if you look at it, a lot of black middle straighter in our communities, particularly in the urban areas. So you've got to make a deep analysis about that um, as to over and above the things that we know in Gauteng, like for instance, electricity. You've got people in Soweto who are without electricity. They are still without electricity up until now because transformers, they were cut out. Somebody alleged that load shedding is back uh, during the election day because there were power outages because of city power in the base areas of, 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 of Haute. And there were water problems and all of that. Some of those things could have contributed to dampen uh, the resilience of uh, people to go out and vote for the ANC. Because uh, not turning up to vote is an enemy equally uh, of, of the ANC in the election campaign because small parties and opposition parties become beneficiaries uh, out of that particular situation. So that, that, that we have to conduct a, an, an analysis. News 24 again, I made an example. I'm not saying we are not guided by ideology. We are guided by ideology. But the circumstances with your ideology force you to even work with people who necessarily do not share the same perspective as yours. Um, we have had uh, strange coalitions in this local government uh, arrangements that we have. Uh, even with people who said that we will not work with the ANC, but the, willing, the outcome of the elections becomes something else. And then you must then begin to define models of the working together. The problem with the local government arrangement, it does not have uh, models. It is just working together. A mayor changes, can't do it. A mayor changes over a weekend, and then you go and work with others. National government, you want to achieve stability, constitutionality, the rule of law, all of those things must then begin to guide us in this part. But equally, how do you satisfy the interest of the ANC constituency that voted those six million people and more? How are they going to be served by the working relations between parties? Or is just there is no honor among thieves, let's work together. 
It doesn't work like that. You've got to think deep and hard. And that's what we're doing. I can assure you. And uh, we can assure you, as the ANC, we are applying our mind and all of that uh, in terms of this. So I don't say that we are not guided by ideology. We do. And uh, we are guided also by principles. And uh, how do we serve the interest of the people of South Africa better? And uh, the glue that brings us together is South Africanness. Yeah. And then uh, South Africa as a country, as a nation, must exist uh, beyond narrow political interest. We've got to serve the people uh, of this country. And, and, and that is what uh, is important. And uh, the constitutionality is very important. We can't just uh, throw the constitution away. Uh, talks about talks. Uh, we talk to people who are willing to talk to us, but equally the score but guide us. Okay? Uh, it guides us that uh, here is the meaningful party you've got to talk to. You don't just talk to everyone because it's time to talk. But even those who don't have the numbers, you talk to them. Uh, if they are willing to work with you. Others don't even bother. Uh, I saw my man, he has resigned himself from president candidate to resigned himself to a willing backbencher. And uh, you see a person like those and all of that. And there are all sorts of models you need to work on. And you've got to agree to with people you are talking to. Would you want to consider a government of national unity? So there's a whole lot of things that you need to. And if I want to work with you at, on a bilateral basis, what are we able to offer? And then uh, those are the things that uh, we need to look at in terms of our engagement. Uh, pointing fingers uh, we, we will not help uh, the ANC because those fingers are many. Uh, there are many, there are more than 10. They are quite uh, abnormal. Uh, uh, there is no victor in losing. Um, but we are all victors when we win. Everyone wants to claim victory. Uh, the blame game will kick in. Certain things, so and so did not do this. There's no principled leader in an organization, especially like ours, who work like that. You want to rise at the expense of others. Uh, you don't want to take responsibility. When you are in leadership, you sit down, you analyze. This is what we are going to do. And say, where did we go wrong? You don't uh, rise at the expense of others. Maybe certain things we could have done them better, uh, and all of that. And then uh, you look at also the good things that you have done. And what is it that you need to consolidate as leadership? So that's, those are the things leadership will, 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 will help uh, us in terms of its convergence and meeting. Uh, blame game, uh, even the rumors are dangerous because you don't know who's fueling the rumors. Because the rumors could be coming from your opponents and your enemies to annihilate you politically. So you've got to be careful about the rumors. Things that just get to be said overnight. You don't want to accept the reality that you lost uh, in case at end free and fair to Jacob Zuba. Uh, you want to blame it on somebody. If others have aided Jacob Zuma, it's their choice. Uh, but the fact of the matter is that as we speak today, Jacob Zuma is a force to be reckoned. Uh, in the politics uh, of this South Africa, he is now 14% uh, uh, on the board. He has surpassed EFF. Nobody has surpassed us. We're still there with a reduced majority. But uh, these ones have been surpassing each other. So Zuma has displaced EFF. He will have, I'm sure, more than 50 MPs there. Uh, in Parliament. 
Uh, so he's a force to be reckoned with in terms of his party and in terms of the outcome of this election. Uh, so I'm just stating a reality. I'm not uh, manufacturing my own thing. So I'm, 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 I'm just explaining the fact that it doesn't serve the ANC or anyone uh, for finger pointing. Uh, that, is, that, that, that is the fact. A junior, uh, was uh, the ANC you accuse us of being arrogant? Um, we, are not, uh, we have not been. And it's a very interesting assertion that you are making that uh, we came across as arrogant. I don't think so. We humbled ourselves to the people and we seek to do things differently and uh, engage the people because if you are arrogant you don't talk to the people you take it as a as a as given that the people will support you i've given you a detailed account what we have done in this election to fight the demon of low voter turnout of our people walking away from the nc we knocked on their doors we asked them because we saw the danger and we have done everything. Uh, whether we have done everything to the point where we say uh, we exhausted everything, uh, in the book uh, we will look into that when we meet and when we get a, a, a report. Uh, ENCA, uh, the will of the people, uh, will be reflected in our engagement that is the starting point uh, entertaining everybody i've explained it's not just that we are engaging with everybody who met us in terms of the outcome uh, of the election and uh, we are not uh, i can assure you we are not running to people hey when it goes to the bathroom come this side we are not pulling people by their jackets. No, we are not. Uh, not this time around. Uh, we are not. We will talk to people's sense and politics and models. We will engage. If you come to us with terms and all of that, we are not in that game. Uh, giving an examination to write again, those things we are not going to do. Uh, you remember when we were engaging last time, other political parties gave us an exam uh, to write. If you come to us with that mentality, forget, just go. Just go on your own. We are not afraid to go to the benches. We are not. That must be very clear to everybody. We are not arrogant not to work with anyone because the people of South Africa have shown us what the, their wish is. And don't second guess us and lie about us that we've got a pact. I know some girl is asking a very uh, provocative question about Tony Leon. Why do you talk about Tony Leon? You don't talk about other parties who are talking to us. And then you raise Tony Leon because you are peddling the lie that the ANC is gravitating to the right, is having a deal. Uh, all with the DA, it is a done deal. DA has got the respect for itself as a political party, it has got a constituency. The ANC has got a constituency, it has got leadership. It applies principles and all of that. So there's a lie that has been going around to preempt any discussion, maybe between the ANC and the DA or whoever. It's not possible to do that to us. And you say, we must then go to terms with others. No, we have read it in the papers that certain parties have made demands. Our president must go, uh, so and so, this and that. We don't know up until we meet eye for an eye. We have heard some of them from this platform uh, of the media saying all sorts of things. But we have never heard anyone saying they are not prepared to, to work with us. So, I've explained, we are entertaining everyone who met us in terms of the election outcome. Because the election outcome have told us that the ANC is number one, DA is number two, 
Uh, Zuma is number three, EFF is number four, and then others follow uh, on the bottom. We'll get the results today, and they will tell us. ANC number one, DA number two. We've got six million people who have voted for us to continue. We've got to respect them. We can't just throw the towel. We've got to respect those people, respect South Africans who still want the ANC to continue to be in power and lead. And how we're going to deal with that is going to be in the detail of principles and how we're going to safeguard ourselves. And not only for ourselves, but for South Africa. For South Africa's stability and uh, moving forward. So, the long and short of it, I'm saying we will not be bullied. And if we go to the benches, you will see the biggest opposition ever. <laughs> you have never seen in this country, ever, in the National Assembly. And we are not arrogant as though we have won power when we have not won power. We have not won power. Talk to Inkata Freedom Party, yes, we will. Uh, and everyone else. NFP, we will. Uh, if Musa Maimani, I don't know how many they are, Musi Maimani, or whoever want to talk, we will engage with everybody. So that's what I'm saying. Uh, Sam Kele, did structures betray us? That is a very problematic question. We don't just come out of the election and blame structures. We have worked very hard. Uh, for our victory. We need to analyze that phenomenon of KZN and the MK party. You see, when you look at the MK party, they collected some votes in Gaute, mm. and then they collected a big chunk in uh, Mpumalang, and then uh, they lost everywhere in the country. So you've got to analyze that phenomenon as to <coughs> How has it manifested itself? It goes back to that deep analysis we are going to conduct. Now, you are not going to conduct an analysis by starting to blame your structures and then start to see enemies all over. Uh, we knew Zuma will get support, but not this much. To be honest with you, we knew he will get support, but not this much. Um, our biggest worry based on the last election, and as we do work in KZN, was uh, Inkata Freedom Party. And also the posture the Royal House has taken in this election. And uh, by so saying, uh, because it was moving away from us and all sorts of factors, and uh, getting into politics of aiding the IFP uh, in this election. So we are not in the blame game to say that, ah, we cannot be blamed. We are stating the facts. As we got into this election, everyone wanted us down, and, uh, including the media. Um, uh, and uh, you, you did your part, and, but, uh, but uh, we can't blame you. Uh, but you did. I mean, uh, the notion of change began to take a different dimension uh, in the queues and everywhere else. So uh, it happened, and uh, so uh, we stood our ground and we fought very hard and we lost. Did we commit mistakes? Yes, we did. We did commit mistakes in governance and uh, everywhere else. We need to analyze those mistakes. What are those? We don't do them. And then we need to analyze the bleeding that has been brought by JZ forming a party. If Zuma, let's say, he didn't form MK party, he supported the ANC, we wouldn't be here talking about so and so. We would have crossed maybe to 8 million. Mm -hmm. Even in a low voter turnout, cushioned by KZN and parts of Gauteng. And faced with a low voter turnout, we would have crossed. So it did eat into our base. Uh, and that is how difficult this election was. You know, and the EFF uh, and so on. 
So uh, not everyone got what they wanted, but we got uh, a beating, most, uh, to be below 50%. Now, democracy normalizes. You navigate through these processes. We have only seen this in advanced democracies in Europe, people navigating through coalitions. So we are in the era of coalitions. It started in local government. We are now at national government. So we, we need to study all the models of coalitions, how they've worked for stability of countries and all of that, even ourselves, without compromising the constituencies that we serve. So there are different models that we look at. And even political parties, I'm certain, wherever they are, they are not stooges of the ANC. They are applying their mind. Now that the election results are out, what is their thinking? Not rebel arousing, not rebel rousers, and uh, threatening other political parties. Think now about the country, its direction, and what we need uh, to do. So we, we hope in the discussions that we have, we'll have sensible, progressive to a certain extent, and some may be backward, uh, and others coming with demands. But we want a discussion of what we are thinking about uh, going forward. Uh, Sam Kelo says this bank case at end. Um, we, 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 we we have not taken that decision. Why didn't we disband? The question is, why did you not act as per what you found in your NWC visit last year, when you found a lot of problems in the region and you found it in structures with me and there were recommendations in place to take action against the structure? No, no, the, 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 my interpretation is not what you said, it's my interpretation. When I start by saying this band case at them, uh, at the final end and analysis of what you are saying, my interpretation is that this band. This band now, or why didn't you this band before? And uh, thank you uh, for your interruption. Uh, uh, that's how tolerant we are, Junior Kuman. We are not arrogant. We allow some girl just to interrupt us. Uh, we have uh, the problem of losing power. Yes. Uh, you could know you are not in power, you see. You, you can no longer be what you want to be. So, so but I'm saying. There was never such a recommendation to disband the structure. At that time when we visited, we analyzed all the weaknesses that were there. And then uh, we have acted on some uh, weaknesses together with the province. And uh, we now have this particular result which collectively we will analyze uh, when that time comes uh, and so on. We, we also, I saw there was a letter circulating on Sunday Times uh, that uh, KZN was forewarned how to handle the matter of Jacob Zuma. The reality, uh, people must understand, is that um, how the Jacob Zuma issue has erupted, you may think was stoppable. It was unstoppable. Because Zuma closed the void that was there in terms of the politics of the country. And that void that he closed has impacted negatively to the ANC. And it has not, it has not favored in God, in case of that. It has not favored us, it has served him very well. Because once that void of a father figure leader coming out in KwaZulu Natal, it then favored Jacob Zuma. Uh, in this particular instance. It's a matter that we will analyze for days to come uh, in relation to how the ANC deals with the outcome of this particular election. And uh, uh, the ANC will make that analysis uh, together with its own structures in KwaZulu Natal. Uh, they will either confirm or not confirm some of the things that have been said that certain people worked with MK party 
whilst they are inside the ANC. We, 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 will, we will draw that report and look into all of those things and we deal with, with, with them. Uh, who is negotiating with uh, a Tony Dion and all of that? Uh, I don't know. Uh, we are engaging with everybody. I'm not aware that uh, as a person accounting for negotiations and engagements uh, that there is a separate channel uh, of that particular sort. Uh, but if it serves the purpose of what we are about in terms of talks about talks, it will come to our table and uh, we will consider it. Channels of negotiating with people are not one way and then uh, there are many channels that are undertaken by political parties. Somebody from a political party might say that I don't want to talk to Mbalula. I'd rather go <laughs> no <mvula. laughs> uh, because we have said things in the campaign and somebody doesn't take it nicely. So you twist and tear, but parties engage in different, in different ways and all of that guided uh, by their own way of doing things. MTV uh, parties, what uh, they actually prefer uh, in relation to positions, you have had uh, people saying we want finance, we want, that's the last thing in the discussions. Mm -hmm. That's the last thing. Easy food. Uguabelana. Ubengelana. No, that's easy. You can take home affairs. You can take transport. You can take uh, economy. You can do that. That's easy. The discussions are about what do we want to achieve out of this country, given the outcome of the election. So uh, we believe that when we engage with political parties, the posture will not be the one of exchanging. That is the last thing uh, that is easy to achieve uh, in the discussions uh, when it comes to positions. And uh, Norman City Press, does ANC have non-negotiables? Uh, we've got a perspective that is guiding us, which we have shared with you uh, about uh, how we engage uh, with uh, coalitions and what are our intentions. And then uh, we will answer that question when we come back, after we have concluded uh, our discussions with political parties, but also after we have reported to the National Executive Committee. So this is not the last press conference on this matter. So the next one that is going to come, it will outline the perspective agreements, if there is any talks that have not taken off, have not produced any result, we will give you that feedback. Uh, give us that space. Tuesday we have an NEC meeting. After the NEC meeting, we will again convene you and give you a feedback of the National Executive Committee. In terms of what the NEC itself will have benefited from the work the officials are doing and the National Working Committee. So we will give you that feedback after the NEC. Uh, the direction we are basically taking. Uh, how many parties we are talking to? We are talking with everybody who's significant. And, uh, and anyone who has not achieved a bigger result but is interested to work with us. So there are many people who have approached us who are here. But the most important, when you come out of an election, you look at the leaderboard and then it will tell you who you must talk to. Because that is the outcome of an election, and that reflects the will of the people. Uh, the will of the people. The will of the people have said, have given us six million. ANC, go and talk to others. Who are those? And that is what is important, so we are engaging. And then we'll, we have been uh, approached and we are talking to everyone, uh, because we don't have the power to constitute government on our own and do things on our own. We've got to talk to others. Uh, how are we going to... Former leaders are not, are not used. 
uh, former leaders are, are not uh, uh, used. I'm told our time is up here. Uh, former leaders are not used. They are members of the ANC. And then uh, they've been invited. So the outcome of what has happened affects all of us. So let's not use the word used. Nobody has resigned from the ANC except the only one you know. But even himself, he still say he's still a member. Uh, so all people are in the fold of the African of the African National Congress. So I wish to thank you and thank everybody. And I'm told our time is up here. And thank you. You still want something, Sam Keller? Yes, one. Mm. Uh, Mr. Baru, just on that particular issue, there is one question you never answered on the ideology that if you decide to go to the it will lead to the biggest split within the party since the PAC. Where do you go in that particular perspective? Where your own members have said, the A is a no no. If you go that route, you will, you will appreciate your politics. Sam Kelly. Uh, as I conclude, you listen to all sorts of people mm. who call themselves ANC. Mm. ANC, whatever decision it will arrive at at the end of the day, we will still come back to you after the National Executive Committee meeting. Um, uh, ANC understands that the outcome of the elections do not favor us. There are political parties, there is a country to be run, and then there are various models we need to engage with. Unfortunately, things are not guided by initia and rigidity. Yes, you are principled, you are ideological. How do you navigate with your six million in the politics of the country? You've got six million people which is strong on the leaderboard. How do you navigate with them, with that number, to govern this country with others? And that is what is important Yeah. So the rigidity, and uh, that's not what is guiding us. We are guided by the ideology, we are guided by the principles, and but equally we are guided by the interest of people who have voted for the ANC, who have said that we don't want you to be out of power. We are not going to entertain smear campaign and uh, locking us into a corner when we don't have powers to do so. We and the DA, we are like uh, water and uh, oil. Uh, at the end of the day, our constituencies have placed us where we are, where we can govern, or outright on our own. That's why we talk about outright majority, right? And uh, other people have got demands that they have and all of that and so on. You've got to not weigh up and gauge. That is why I'm saying we will not be in a position to entertain an exam paper now. Because the exam paper is not going to take us anywhere. We've got to engage with the issue of the models, but at the same time, where we want to go to. Uh, positions you want to become a minister of this and that that's an easy task uh, to perform uh, so from here as we conclude tomorrow we are in the NWC and the officials meeting Tuesday we are in the office we are in the NEC meeting on Wednesday we will be able to brief you about as it goes now we are talking to everybody it is talks about talks uh, so don't ever raise a question, hey, why did you meet with uh, so and so? I've briefed you now. See, I Ted. Even with FF Plus. Yes, even with FF Plus. Uh, we're talking uh, because we don't have power. But that's Yeah. We are talking, but we are not begging. We are not going to beg anybody. But we respect the will of the people and the outcome the people of South Africa have given us. So we can't be strutting like peacocks when uh, we have not been given status to strut. So we've got to engage and understand that we're engaging, we're talking with everybody, what makes sense to us. And people have got constituencies too. 
their constituencies what they want must be respected we too we've got constituencies some girl we've got members and we've got feelers on the ground we know what anc members feel equally there are anc members who've got a different view who says that no don't work with so and so so we take emotions out we deal with principles and we deal with models that's what is important how you feel now about so and so doesn't matter because if you've got feelings you will not end up talking to everybody the elections have humbled us they've brought us where we are and therefore we've got to talk to everyone even notam kulwe to fenegas kulumile nai ya bon unless ya nakafuna kuluma nathi thina funeka sikhulumile nai and then that is it and then uh, when all of those things are done and dusted we'll be able to give direction and, and give you where we we are going thank you very much ladies and gentlemen of the press for your time